So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology and welcome to my loser phones of 2022. Now I don't mean like you're a loser if you have this phone. I mean like I did a smartphone awards video the other day. Now we're gonna talk about the phones that didn't make the list and would go in the category. They're just not the winners of this year. They're gonna go into the loser category in terms of they lost the round of being the best of the year. Now, all the phones I'm gonna cover here in this video are, are pretty decent phones. None of them are bad. I don't really review garbage phones on this channel. So if you're looking for some garbage phones, this is not the channel for you. Um, so just let me get that out the way first. But I just wanna talk about why these didn't make the list. And again, none of them are horrible phones, but they're just not good enough to, you know, I, they're just not the best recommendation when there's other options available. I'm gonna talk about the Galaxy A53 right here. So when I first seen this phone, I was very impressed. You know, I thought it was gonna be amazing. And I'm okay with a lot of Samsung's decisions here. The looks are nice, the plastic back is okay. I'm okay with that. The edges look nice, I like the punch hole, the display, software is good. My problem with this phone is that it performs bad. Like most of the time it just, you know, it's, I get it. It's a budget Samsung, it's not their premium stuff. But overall, this phone just doesn't perform as good as I would like. I actually had to lower the animations to get it to the point of decent performance. Now, just regular using it, it's okay day to day, but when you start actually multitasking using some of Samsung's cool features that they do include with the One UI, I just run into too many stutters and hiccups. So simply all Samsung has to do is slightly increase the performance on the next A series model here, the A50 line and we're gonna have an absolute boss winner next year. But this year, I think they dropped the ball a little bit on the performance there. Very disappointed with the stuttering and stuff like that that I experienced with the Galaxy A53. So it makes my list. Let's switch over to Apple. This one's gonna anger some people, but the iPhone SE. Reason why this one's going on the list is because Apple keeps deciding to bring this old design. Now I know this does have fanfare. People love their home button. A lot of people love this older design, but it's 2022. We're going into 2023. You know, look at the competition. The A series makes this thing look archaic, as does the Google Pixel 6a. So Apple really needs to upgrade the design, the feel of their budget iPhone SE. It just feels much too old at this point. Performance is rock solid, probably the best camera you can get in this price range, but it doesn't make the winner list because even though it's probably the fastest, best value phone on the market when it comes to speed, software updates, reliability, the problem is I don't wanna use a phone that feels like it's from 2016. I'm just not a fan of that. So the SE is definitely not a winner for me this year. Although, again, I'm not knocking it. It's a good phone. All I'm saying is that it's definitely not gonna be a winner of 2022. It just can't make the list when you're using a design from the iPhone 7. Next up, I didn't wanna put this phone on the list, but because of the experience I had with it, it has to go here. The Galaxy S22, the base model edition. This phone is absolutely gorgeous. I love the design, Samsung knocked it out of the park. We do have really thin bezels, beautiful feel in the hand. They did widen the display, so they listen there. It's not super narrow anymore. Do like that, display gets incredibly bright with the extra brightness mode. And by all standards, this is a premium high-end flagship device. Only issue is it overheats way too often. I mean, I've only had it on for a few minutes. It already feels pretty warm. So overall, this phone just gets far too warm for the day-to-day. -day. So this really made me not want to use this phone that much. It's just uncomfortably warm. And also, you know, it has gotten a little bit better with the updates. But at first, the battery life was pretty horrible as well on this phone. So Samsung really needs to upgrade their battery life on the next base S series model and also fix the overheating thing because, you know, the Galaxy Z Fold, stellar performance, the Fold 4, no overheating, great battery life. And I know that phone's got more space or bigger battery, but hopefully they can find a way to improve battery life and just kind of just how it feels. So it doesn't feel so hot. So I still love the phone. I, li I love to look at it, hold this device. But honestly, using this day to day, I just think there's better options and it could not make the winner's list or my smartphone awards video for 2022. So I'll still cover this in the future with some updates and stuff like that. But 
S22, I do believe you have better options at that price point for sure in terms of just kind of how it you know, feels to perform and battery life and stuff like that. There's gonna be better options than that out there. Honestly, I probably would take the Pixel 6 over that one just because of those heat issues. Now the next one that's going on the list and some of you probably expected this, but the iPhone 14 Plus. Again, nothing wrong with performance here besides no ProMotion display. The phone has some of the best chip out there, Apple A15 Bionic chipset, six gigabytes of RAM, a really big display, premium design, but it's the price. This phone is pushing the pro territory. It really turns off a lot of customers. Nobody wants to pay a thousand with taxes for a phone when they can get the triple camera, the pro design, and the latest one. This one looks like last year's iPhone 13, just bigger. So Apple either needs to come down on the price point or do something a little bit more to make this phone more entertaining for the buyer. I, I could even see them bringing a dynamic island to the next one. That might pull people in a little bit more, but at this price point, it's a really tough sell, especially when you knock off some brightness. This doesn't even hit 1,000 nits. This doesn't hit the 120 hertz. People can just go buy a 13 Pro Max or a 12 Pro Max and get essentially the same thing for cheaper. So, you know, yes, it does have an amazing action camera on board. I am happy with that to report that, but I got to say overall, you know, this phone based on the comments I've been reading and based on what I've been talking about with other people, eh, it's just not super exciting. So it's not a winner here in 2022. And that's funny because if you look at my prior years or you look at the prior years of smartphone technology, the 14 plus, I mean, even the S22, all these phones would have been stellar top tier level devices. But when the market has advanced to where it is today, you basically, you got to do a little bit more these days. And that's pretty much my list there. I will want to make an honorable mention of the regular 14 and this one probably a little bit more popular than the 14 plus just because people are getting it at a similar price as a 13. I'm just going to grab the 14. However, because again, this is so similar to the 13, it's just not super exciting. This phone could not make my top awards list of this year. Again, this one's just kind of an honorable mention, so it's not really in the list of the losers this year, but you know, the 14 was kind of boring as well, so I just wanted to mention that overall. So these are the four that I reviewed this year that I don't find to be my favorite. However, I do think all of them are still good phones. They can provide you with good service and all that. But if you're looking to spend, let's say, for the A series, you have the Pixel 6a, which has, I think, a better experience. S same with the um, the iPhone SE. I think the 6a is actually a little bit better experience than that, unless you just have to have Apple. Or you could just buy you know, a used iPhone with a bigger screen and just have a better experience. So that's tough to recommend. With the Galaxy S22, at its price point, you do have better performing options as well, such as even like the iPhone 13 and stuff like that. Even though those don't have the same 120 hertz displays, you can also just get the Pixel 6, which is also probably a decent better option than this one. Or you can just look at like a yesteryear Samsung Galaxy phone that has better performance, better battery life than the S22. So that's a tough one. And again, with the iPhone 14, tough to recommend due to you know, the 14 plus due to the fact that you can get a 13 Pro Max for the same price with a 120 hertz. So that's it for me. Let me know which phones did not make your list or phones this year that did not impress you. Again, none of these are like the mid range or lower end of the tier. There are phones that would be trash compared to these. These are all really good. And a lot of people are gonna say, I wish I had some of those phones, but at the same time, I'm only gonna be covering in this video, the phones that I reviewed on this channel and talk about those. So again, there is more, there is much worse devices out there. So I'd like to hear which ones you thought did not impress you this year. Let's talk about it down below in the comments section. Have a great day. And if I don't see you till the new year, have a happy new year, happy new year's Eve. And uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you very much for all your support, all the love and throughout 2022. And I hope you have a great 2023. I'll catch you next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.